Heartbeat Alaska is brought to you in part by Coca-Cola. Heartbeat Alaska is also brought to you by the Alaska Commercial Company, Alaska's leading retailer of food, family apparel, and general merchandise in remote Alaskan communities, with continuous service since 1867. By the generous support of the Alaska Native Health Board. There's a heartbeat louder than thunder. Revolution is in the air. There's a heartbeat deep inside our mother. Are you too cool to care? Hello and welcome to Heartbeat Alaska. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to you, Mom. Mabel Blatchford and Seward. And happy Mother's Day to all my sisters and to every single mother across Alaska. Today is going to be a Mother's Day celebration show. We do have our news, though. KYUK-TV in Bethel brings us their news. Also from KYUK Radio, we have Peter Twitchell, who brings us a very special Mother's Day song. Elise Pactacock from Barrow has her Mother's Day commentary. But most importantly, on today's program, we have with me Mr. Terry Christensen. Now, Mr. Christensen is from Port Hyden, and he's well known for his fabulous fishing and cooking. And today he brings us a recipe called pierogi, which is a Russian fish casserole. And it is fabulous. I've tried it. All that plus much more. But first, here's Gary Fife with Native News Across the Nation. This is so good. This is Native News Across the Nation. I'm Gary Fife. On the heels of the White House meeting last week between President Clinton and hundreds of leaders of federally recognized tribal governments, the administration sat down to hear the specific concerns of Native Americans. On Thursday, May 5th, the administration heard the concerns of Native Americans in the National American Indian Listening Session in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Interior Secretary Bruce Babbitt and U.S. Attorney General Janet Reno sat at small roundtable discussions with various tribal leaders. Topping the Natives' agendas were concerns to protect their rights to self-determination on their reservations. That topic had a broad scope, including everything from hunting and fishing rights to gaming to exercise of other governmental powers. High on the list was the issue of Native American religious freedom, access to religious sites and eagle feathers, and exercise of Native religion for prisoners in uh, federal and state prisons. The Clinton administration had been under some criticism from Natives for a lack of what they called meaningful consultation. The reaction from Native leaders so far has, to been, call, has, to, has been to call the, the latest two sessions more than just a photo opportunity and signs of real commitment. The issue of Alaska Native peoples have been getting more attention in national circles lately. Akiachuk leader and president of the Alaska Intertribal Council, Willie Kasaili, was second to address the president last week at the White House. Kasaili called for protections for subsistence hunting and fishing rights in the state, even going so far to say the words native pref preference under federal law. Natives were present at the recent listening session in Albuquerque, again hammering for the need for subsistence rights and their protections, and making a case for the return of native artifacts not only from this nation's museums, but from Russia as well. A proposal to raise the position of the Indian Health Service within the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services has been introduced in the U.S. Senate. A bill by Arizona Senator John McCain would elevate the position of the director of the Indian Health Service to an assistant secretary level, as with the Department of Interior. The effect would be to make the IHS more visible and get more clout when the annual budgets are made up for the entire department. That low-level position has been cited as the reason the IHS had been designated for a $247 million cut by the Clinton administration. $125 million of that cut has been restored after Native leaders and health professionals complained in public. No date has been set for Senate committee action on that bill. The Council House of the Creek Nation of Oklahoma recently hosted its first intertribal meeting in its history. 
The occasion was the meeting of the Intertribal Council of the Five Civilized Tribes, the Muscogee Creek, the Cherokee, the Chickasaw, the Choctaw, and the Seminoles of Oklahoma. The assembled tribes approved resolutions calling for amendments to the Oklahoma Indian Child Welfare Act that would call for more collaboration among each of the tribe's own child welfare departments. The group also voted to recommend that a native attorney, Jerry Muskrat, be appointed to the Federal Tenth Circuit Court of Appeals. The meeting took place in the original courthouse built by the Creek Nation in Muskogee, Oklahoma in the 1800s. And finally, Inupiat Eskimos of the northernmost community on the globe have landed their first whale of the season, and that meant the business of the North Slope Borough was temporarily put on hold while several members, including whaling captain Jake Adams, were out taking the first whale. Adams says the 28-foot bowhead whale is skinny and should make good eating. Subsistence whaling is a highly regulated activity with specific allotments of whales landed or strikes being allocated to each village. The Alaska Eskimo Whaling Commission says a total of six bowhead whales have been landed by Alaska natives since the spring whaling season began for everyone. That means muktuk for everyone. And we'd like to say it's Mother's Day and we wish all native mothers a happy Mother's Day. For Heartbeat Alaska, this is native news across the nation. And I'm Jenny Lee Fife's son, Gary. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you, Gary. We'll be back with more news from Heartbeat Alaska, John Active's KYUK report, right after these messages. between HIV and AIDS. Two, how safe. The virus does not discriminate. Alaskam inipiangi pilgui lingarak pickup to ikayutinik inu sukuven ilikun Savaluted pilla singagate ikayutik satin ay marving ne Savaluted iluaktiv luget mechlek to nunlo kat kangaron nunlo Mikiru rakaluak ikayutik sangit inuit kanoglima ukio kakaluak pata in mikun inu neomarot Ilisimaf saukuven tamat kununa koko lalutin eight hundred seven seven zero zero one three eight Welcome back, and happy Mother's Day to every single mother that's watching. We travel now to Bethel for KYUK-TV's report with John Active. Thank you, Jimmy. Jamai, Alaska, Akumalgo. Here's the latest from Southwest Alaska. Even though students in the village of Nuhtuk have no school, the senior prom planned for this weekend will still go on. It will be held in one of the classrooms of the elementary school. The students are trying hard not to let the fire that destroyed their high school last Sunday spoil their fun, but it isn't easy. The arsonist who set this fire struck at the heart of Nihutak. In a village, the high school is more than just a school. It is also a central gathering place for the community. The scraps of twisted metal and ashes that blacken the tundra have cast a shadow over this community. Although the fire is out, feelings of anger and loss are smoldering. State troopers say the trouble started when 28-year-old Otto John went on a drunken shooting rampage early Sunday morning. 
Troopers say John set three fires later that morning, one that completely destroyed the high school, another that damaged the elementary, and a third fire in the phone utilities building. Troopers say John also trashed the phone system with an axe. John worked as a janitor for the school until he was suspended several weeks ago. He told investigators the stress of being suspended combined with his drinking problems sent him over the edge. Like most people in New Duck, Jimmy Tom is related to Otto John and has mixed feelings about what happened. I'm relieved that he was taken away safely, and I'm glad he's in jail where they can keep an eye on him. While he's in jail, he'll have time to think about what he did, and it will make him ashamed. What does it make you feel like to lose the school? Bad, pretty bad. Kind of angry. Few villagers wanted to talk about the fire. Nuktuk's principal, Larry Stibor, says that's because everyone is still in a state of shock and disbelief. Well, someone could wave a magic wand and eliminate uh, alcohol uh, uh, from uh, the region or from the world. Maybe uh, I'm sure a lot, uh, a lot of things like this uh, wouldn't happen. And. Um, um, but that's, that's also not really getting to the uh, root of the problems. For now, that may have to be set aside. Teachers are scrambling to get through the rest of the school year, and they are trying to figure out what to do next year. It won't be until next spring before a new school will be ready to open. Until then, 100 students will have to share the cramped space in this elementary school, and that means going to double shifts. Seniors will use the Catholic Church in the village for the graduation ceremony next weekend. While it's true the students are disappointed, they're resilient, and they have this message for us. Guyana Nitunilucci, thank you for listening. Reporting from Public Radio Television Station KYUK in Bethel, Alaska, I'm John Active, and happy Mother's Day. Thank you, John Active, from KYUK TV and Radio in Bethel, Alaska. And thank you, residents of New Talk, Alaska, for that greeting. It's been said that Alaska Natives have never really been conquered, and there's the reason right there. Happy Mother's Day to every single mother in Newtalk, Alaska. Every single grandmother in Newtalk, Alaska. Well, are you hungry? I hope so, because Aleut chef Terry Christensen has something very special for you. Hi, we're from Port Hyden. My name is Terry Christensen, and this is... And we're going to make for Mother's Day a Russian celebration pie called pirog. And I'm going to show you guys how it's done. So if you'll bear with me, we'll get going. We'll use the, uh, the rice, which calls for rice, and, uh, and fish is the main ingredients. We'll put them in here like this. Uh, like that. Right, hon? Mm -hmm. Now get me the fish right there. And put the candle back. This is silver salmon can from last year. This used to be made with uh, salt salmon during the old days, but now in modern times we use canned, canned stuff which lasts longer and tastes just as good. This was brought over here by the Russians during the, when the Russians were in Alaska. And the pie is called pirok. It's a celebration pie and it's got his name Russian pie and because it was used during the, the Russian celebration times around Christmas and uh, Russian Christmas time and, and Easter. And Easter was last week. So we decided to make this for, for Mother's Day for all the mothers in Alaska because my mom was good cooking. Every mom in Alaska is good cook, right, hon? Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's that. Get this all mixed up good. Okay, honey, you can hand me uh, 
You can slice those eggs, okay? Will you slice those eggs for me? Okay. We need to uh, cook this bacon a little bit here. I was raised on this stuff with them um, in the village. And we use a cup of green onions along with this cup of uh, bacon for flavor. These green onions, they give it a lot of color to them. Sweet sweetheart? Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to get some air like that. Okay, now these get mixed together. Yeah, good like that. mixture of a mixture of different seasonings that I use from my cupboard I couldn't tell you what all is in there salt and pepper amongst other things heated in a, in a sauce a little broth that I stir up with, with salt and that get mixed in there there that is basically our fish pie now we'll put that aside. Take this out. I gotta go get the um, Okay. I made this earlier. This is uh, this is the dough that I prepared earlier. Maybe okay. Yeah. okay, this is Sweetheart, wait a minute. We'll put it like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you can put the eggs. Put the eggs in. Kind of do a nice job, sunshine. baked for about an hour. will go in the oven. Well, it looks like we had about an hour, huh? Okay. 
これ多くないのあ、ごめんなさい。I hope you wrote down the recipe. My mother has a fabulous recipe for halibut pie too. It's sort of the same, except that you make layers. It's really good. I suppose everyone has their own way to do it. Well, we'll be back with more Mother's Day messages and surprises right after these messages. Don't go away. Many times our Alaska Native culture is lost through alcohol and drug abuse. At Aquila House, we can help you regain your life as well as your heritage too. We use a holistic treatment approach for physical, mental, and spiritual values to come back to you. If you need long-term treatment for alcohol and drug addiction, the Aquila House can help you. We are a 53-bed therapeutic community and have recently added a Native services. So call us, Kiana. And now a special treat from a man who wears many hats, Peter Twitchell. He's a Yupik man. He's a radio announcer, producer. He's also a songwriter, a musician, composer, poet, you name it. He wrote a song for all the mothers watching today. What's so special about this song? It's sung in his native tongue, Yupik. <laughs>
Peter Twitchell, I must say, you are a man full of surprises. That was a fabulous song. Let's turn now to the North Slope Borough with commentary from Elise Spectacock. On this Mother's Day, I want to send out my heartfelt congratulations to all mothers everywhere on the wonderful job they do in raising the next generation. I think this is particularly important because I soon plan to retire and want to be assured that we've raised a generation that plans to support me in my old age in the style to which I wish to become accustomed. I think special recognition should be given to all Alaskan mothers who face certain challenges moms in the lower 48 can't imagine. I've seen normally sane, loving mothers turn into spinach-spewing, neck-swiveling monsters after a dark winter Saturday spent trying to amuse their children while the temperatures outside hovered at 40 below. Those who try to send them out for fresh air immediately regret it when the kids return moments later with runny noses that have the runny stuff frozen on their faces. And it's not as though spring makes it any better. True, the kids can go out to play when the warmer temperatures hit, but those same warm temperatures cause devil mud, a mud harboring germs that could survive a nuclear winter. This mud clings to every fold and crease it can find in the children's socks, shoes, pants, shirts, coats, you name it. All of this mud will, of course, fall off in the house, never in the Arctic entry. Mom then gets to watch her house turn a muddy gray color as rocks, pebbles, slimy goo, devil germs, and other horrendous things seep into her carpet. They wait there for the coming of winter when they jump on the kids and make them all sick at once. If you really want to watch a mother earn her flowers, watch an Arctic mom try to figure out what her child can wear on Halloween that A, looks like a costume, B, fits over a parka, C makes sense with a scarf and heavy gloves or mittens. D is bright enough to make the kid visible while going door to door in the Arctic night. All this, and it has to also please the sensibilities of a seven-year-old who's decided she wants to be a ballerina for Halloween and is pretty sure that ballerinas don't wear heavy boots and woolen mittens with a parka under their tutu. Yet Mother's Day is extra special for Alaskan mothers and they deserve some extra special love and attention. So my hat is off to you, to Janice and Leanne, to Marie and Tina, to Noe, Elaine, Malia, Sandra, and Leslie, to all those moms whose joy is found in the muddy-faced smile of a child who has just learned to manipulate Velcro shoe strips. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you, Elise, and thank you for joining us on another Heartbeat Alaska. Before we leave today, I'd like to welcome our viewers that are watching in Juneau, Alaska, over KTOO Public Television. It's great to have you with us. It's aired, by the way, in Juneau every Saturday evening. Thank you once again for joining us. And I'd like to say Happy Mother's Day again once more to my mother. And I'd like to say Happy Mother's Day to the mothers across Arizona, to the mothers across Canada, and the Russian Far East. East, California and Oregon, wherever you see this program. I hope your day is a blessed one. Thank you so much for joining me and join me next week, won't you? See you then. Oh,